going forward, regardless of the mistakes we have made, regardless of the suspicions that may rightfully have been raised about the way things were done, that going forward we're going to see a lot of action that will result in very fair resolutions as much as we can. The Buffalo Catholic Diocese announcing today that it is filing for bankruptcy as it continues to deal with hundreds of claims of abuse. Good evening, I'm Scott Levin. And I'm Mary Alice Demler. The filing didn't catch anyone off guard. We were expecting this was coming, but the sheer number of claims that the diocese said it's facing is something we did not know. And we have team coverage for you tonight. Let's begin with two on your side, Steve Brown, who had some tough questions for the bishop, who's overseeing all of this. Steve? Scott and Mary Alice, what we learned today is the Catholic clergy sex abuse scandal in Buffalo, bigger than anyone outside the diocese likely knew. The bankruptcy filing today revealed many more victims that the diocese expects to hear from still. An attorney for the diocese told the court today it's anticipated there will be approximately 400 people coming forward all claiming clergy sex abuse. That's larger than the 250 who filed Child Victim Act cases against the diocese. Also factor in the 100 plus people who settled with the diocese in its IRCP program before the Child Victims Act became law in New York. In total, it suggests the diocese is familiar with at least 500 people who have claimed abuse at the hands of Catholic clergy. Those are the numbers which rival the famed Boston clergy sex abuse scandal, which was pointed out to Bishop Edward Scharfenberger this afternoon. That's approaching Boston numbers. It's terrible. Is there a question? But what's the question? How? I mean, the question that everybody has been asking, how is it possible that this has gone on this long this thoroughly through the diocese for so many years before we understood the scope of it today. I have the same question as you do. I would like to know why too, but I want to focus on what we can do now. I can't help going forward by ruminating and speculating as to why certain actions were or were not taken in years past. I don't think that's productive right now. Maybe we can get some investigators to do that. The bishop says right now he is focusing on how to bring about healing and justice for accusers through the bankruptcy process and beyond that. Now, the diocese claims that its assets are currently somewhere between 10 and $50 million. It estimates that it owes various entities, people, including clergy sex abuse accusers, somewhere between 50 and $100 million. Today is just the beginning of what's expected to be a lengthy process, figuring out who will be paid and exactly where the money comes from. Steve Brown, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Steve. Well, Chapter 11 is a complicated process, but this isn't the first religious institution to go through bankruptcy. Channel 2's Michael Wooten got some expert insight into how this will all play out. What'd you find out, Michael? Hey, Scott and Mary Alice. If we look at the two dozen or so other dioceses across the country that have filed bankruptcy over the past 20 years, we can expect this process will take not months, but likely years. I talked today with John Hurley. He used to practice bankruptcy law before he went into higher education and became president of Canisius College. Hurley says one of the first steps in all this will be for the court to decide if pending lawsuits against parishes will be stayed, put on hold, just like those filed against the diocese. The diocese will also have to come up with an operating plan and one that the court will sign off on. And then there will be a first meeting of creditors. That's when diocesan leaders will have to go under oath and answer questions about assets and liabilities. Longer term, the bankruptcy court will have to figure out how much money does the diocese really have? How much will it have to pay out to victims and other creditors? Longer term, after the case gets going, there's going to be uh, likely litigation about the insurance coverage for the diocese because the insurance coverage will probably form the largest percentage of the, of the pot or the fund, as it were, to compensate uh, claimants. Hurley compared this process to what happened in the Twin Cities in Minnesota. The Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis has a membership that's just slightly larger than here in Buffalo, and there the bankruptcy, which wrapped up in 2018, lasted about four years. But Scott Mary Alice Hurley says, interestingly enough, there have been so many of these church bankruptcies now that there is this kind of nationwide playbook, and he thinks that could actually help speed up the process here, while he also says it's going to take a while. As you mentioned, it is not going to be a quick one yeah. and we'll continue to follow. Thank you, Michael. 
Well, there are certainly people who are critical of the bishop's bankruptcy move. And among them, attorney Mike Tahiri, an attorney, but also a devoted Catholic who attends Mass daily and is part of the volunteer ministry at St. Luke's Mission of Mercy. Tahiri had very strong words for the diocese. None of us have ever heard of anybody coming out of the bankruptcy where they said this was a great result. We're very happy. Instead, I think what you see here is the bishop trying to control the Catholic narrative, damage control, put it in a court where there's no trial. Let's not allow these victims to testify. Let's not allow to hear their story. It's bigger than money. He wants to couch it as a financial issue. And look, we're trying to make them whole. That's shameful. These victims need to be, have their story heard and the priests need to be held accountable. Then we as parishioners walk hand in hand with the victims and we march together through healing. That's how healing is going to occur when the parishioners and the victims together suffer in that suffering. That's the purification about how Christ is found. And you'll be able to watch more of that conversation on WGRZ.com and the Two On Your Side app later tonight. We'll also be posting more from the Bishop's News Conference, and you can read the bankruptcy filing that the diocese made today.